In Q3 2020, AMD released the new and improved Ryzen 5000 processors, but there were those who couldn't get their hands on this next-gen piece of technology. Fiercely sticking to their old ways, valiant users around the world assembled for one final showdown before the next era of Ryzen. I, Ralph, welcome you to Hex1e and the not-so-ancient tale of the last Ryzen. Third gen Ryzen. Let us go over the rest of the hardware for this build first. We have our venerable Ryzen 7 3700X 8 core 16 thread processor. Though probably not as powerful as its Ryzen 5000 counterpart, which doesn't really exist, there isn't a 5700X, it's still a great value choice. As for the board, we're using the MSI MAG B550 Gaming Edge Wi Fi. A high-ish end board based on the B550 chipset. Because of its beefy VRM, it offers great stability even for overclocking and PCIe Gen 4 support for the GPU and first M.2 slot make it ready for future upgrades. I have to say that it was a stroke of luck with the GPU. I found this 2080 Ti with water block for a little more than 500 euros. A dual channel kit of 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro memory and a 1TB Western Digital Blue NVMe complete the picture. A fully modular 650 watt Seasonic Focus Gold PSU will provide enough power to run the setup without any problems. With everything out of the box, I've taken the liberty to assemble the test bed off cam, but I don't think that really matters since I'll be doing everything again once testing's done. But here it is, valiantly chugging along while I run some Prime95 and firmware. I will be doing the tune-up later on, but I really need to know if everything works as it should before doing the final assembly and building the loop. Welcome back. As you can see, the hardware seems to work. This is especially important because of the GPU, which is a used unit. And the person said that I would have like one week or so to give it back if it doesn't work. Um, also, I ran some clock tuner for Ryzen, excellent software. And apparently we got a golden sample, which I think is good news. Okay, it's time now. Let's uh, turn off the system and start building. Now we have everything ready to begin our build. All this now has to get into this box. Okay, not this box. The thing that's inside the box. So the, I mean the case, which is inside here. By now, I've measured the tubing and uh, made a kind of mock assembly. And it's time to make to the final build, the final assembly. Before we do that, I have to talk a little bit about this. I don't have much space here, and uh, the pump is a little bit too high. The client wants the PC as soon as possible. Normally, I would arrange for some rails to put the uh, pump down a little bit, but. He wants it now or as soon as possible and we cannot wait. So we're leaving it like this and maybe in a future upgrade or during a cleaning session or something give this thing a better proportion. So uh, let's do the final assembly while I go over my notes. First off, the case feels kind of cheap and is pretty flimsy. But when adding the water cooling components, mainly the radiator, structural stability improved by a lot. Reinforcing case with water cooling components, it works. Then, as I had noted in the beginning, there is very little space inside this case. If I had known that before, I would have certainly insisted on something larger. The front fan, radiator and pump press combo unit wouldn't have fit without placing the fans between the front of the case and the fine mesh panel. I think I will be... I will start plugging in ugly cables, which I don't like. 
Yes, about those cables. The space between the back of the motherboard tray and the side panel isn't very wide. A few millimeters here would have helped a lot. Uh, talking of cables, we have all this to take care of. Uh, power supply to install and I'll be back out, uh, I'll be back once that's done and show you the results. Cable management is done. Let's look at the insides of our build. On this side, although we didn't use any custom cables, I managed to tuck the not so pretty ones that came with a power supply pretty well. Now to the other side. This isn't the prettiest cable management out there, but I think it does pretty good. Now that cable management is ready, we, fi we can finally start with assembling the loop and filling it up afterwards. Since this is a pretty simple setup of just two water blocks, radiator and pump brace combo, creating the 3D model didn't require much work at all. Let's take a quick look at it before filling the finished loop. The setup is like this. First, we're coming upwards out of the pump press combo, down again and into the GPU. From the GPU, we go to the CPU and from the CPU to the rat, way down here. Finally, we exit the radiator back to the pump press combo. And if you're asking yourself what this is for, it's for the drain of the loop. I know that for this kind of setup, I should have gone for dual radiators, but the cost of the second radiator, appropriate fittings and extra tubing simply wasn't in the budget. Anyway, I'm happy to report that the temperatures weren't too bad at all. After a combined one hour load of Prime 95 small FFTs and Fermark, the CPU hovered around the high 70s and the GPU never exceeded 70 degrees, which is actually quite respectable for a single 360 radiator. Anyway, during gaming, the system won't experience these extreme conditions over this prolonged amount of time, so I'm pretty happy about the performance and how it turned out. Now, with our loop filled, let's take a look at the finished system. Uh, so, that's our filled loop. Now, of course, we need to wait a little bit more so that the bubbles uh, go away and stuff like that. And then comes the greatest moment of all. We finally turn the machine on. Beware of the rainbows, the moment of truth, it boots. That was it for this episode. If you liked it, please leave us a like. And if you don't want to miss any of our future content, consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell. I leave you here now with some images of the finished build. I hope to see you next time here at X1E.